some kind of a branch, looks like. These five days? No, almost a week since you fell. Yeah. Look at this. This is a cinnamon swirl bread thing. I can't wait to cut into that. John's hanging on for dear life because it's windy out there. They even clean your windows. It was a cool, overcast day as we left our campground in Baker City, Oregon, heading for Ellensburg, Washington. This week, it's all about rocks, or maybe it's the making of a pot of stone soup, where we gather a variety of ingredients from unwitting individuals and come up with a satisfying meal for an adventure. I'm gonna see if I got this level. We stopped at a rest stop for breakfast, and the parking lots always seem to slope weird, which makes it hard to cook on the gas stove. So uh, on the recommendation of another viewer, Doug, I went ahead and bought this little induction cooktop because I can level it up <laughs> and the uh, eggs don't all fall to one side. So, so far I like it. And then last night we started hearing chirping from our smoke detector and John took the battery out and then this morning at the grocery store purchased these 10 year lithium batteries. So we're gonna put one of these suckers in there and it should last a really long time. Probably longer than we'll own this van. I don't know what the, this is sticking in. It shouldn't all be a scrambled egg sandwich. Oh well. Quite a while ago, someone had recommended Cholula lime. And the funny thing about this, this particular flavor is I've only found it once in one store. So now we ordered online. So anyway, thank you guys for all your great recommendations. What did you almost forget? I almost forgot the potato chips. So tell us about the battery changing experience in the fire alarm. Uh, we couldn't tell which was positive and which was negative until I got up in there with my camera and took a picture and then blew it up and then I could see the positive. So you might have to do that on your smoke detectors. That was, yeah, really hard to see. Flashlight didn't help either. So here's another tip that I got from a viewer. Sometimes you're, you'll accidentally hit the lever on the sink, on the faucet. And so people use rubber bands around here to hold it like that. Well, I found these silicone rubber bands because the rubber band kept breaking, but this one is much stronger. I'll put, a, I'll, I'll put it in my Amazon store in case you're interested. Although you gotta buy too many of them, but anyway, that works really well. And then I also found these guys, they're magnets and they're using a, Dio, a neodymium magnet, so it's super strong. I also thought, you know, you might be able to use these uh, if you put uh, mesh or some kind of mosquito thing around your door, you could use these guys. Who says billboards don't work? We're gonna check out Bella's. We'll let you know if it's the best ever. The Columbia River Gorge is breathtakingly beautiful, but its geologic history will astonish you. Cataclysmic floods from the sudden ruptures of ice dams on Glacial Lake Missoula scoured the basin dozens of times between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago. These floods left behind fascinating topography, including the Columbia River Gorge, the channeled scab lands of Washington, coolies, dry falls, and deposited rich soils in Oregon's Willamette Valley. Like oh, he's got his monster Crocs on. Franken sandals, come on. Franken Crocs. While John has his leg elevated because we just went to the urgent care, he fell on his bicycle and it started to look pretty bad. So we went to urgent care. The guy told him to elevate it, keep it bandaged. If it gets worse, he gave him a prescription for an antibiotic. So while he's doing that, I'm gonna make some naan. And I got this inspiration from uh, Car uh, Carry On Vagabond. They made naan a couple months ago. And then like a week after that, the Sam the cooking guy made naan. So I thought, okay, I've gotta make some naan. So I've, I've made some at home and it turned out great. So we'll see how it turns out in the van. I'm using Sam's recipe though. Liquids on the bottom, 
which includes the yogurt, oh, oil, oil, flour and salt, sugar and yeast. I think I got everything. Put it on the dough setting. Start and I will to set my timer for one hour. While I was waiting for John at the urgent care, I found a really nice RV park, very close by. It's kind of outside of Ellensburg, uh, and I think it's right on a river, but it was $35 plus tax for water and electric, and it's, it's really quite lovely here. I should also share with you what we got at the kitchen store. So I got two small spatulas, and one I've already used tonight. And I got a smaller instant read thermometer because the one I had uh, was really big and it kind of developed a weird thing to it. So that'll take up less space. And I got a small whisk. This is gonna really save space. And this is a can opener. The guy said this is the, a great can opener. It's actually made in France. If I can find a link to it, I will put it in the description box. And then these scissors, these are like a Swiss army knife of scissors. It has a screwdriver, can opener, and of course, you know, can open things here, uh, bottles and things. And then it has this sharp edge down here where you can like open a package. It has a potato peeler here. Ooh, that's sharp. The dough has risen and this is about, I maybe should have taken it out a few minutes earlier. And I'm not sure what temperature, but we'll experiment. Bought this little baby rolling pin just for this purpose. I've got the fan on. I'm gonna cut, make this into um, eight pieces. The first one's always a little weird. Wait, John? Just like husbands. Yeah, first ones. Oh, you mean my next one will be will be just yeah, unweird? Be just right. Yeah. I don't think so. Carry on Vagabond had to use a wine bottle because they didn't have a uh, rolling pin. There go. Needs to puff more. Here's the last one. Let's see if it gets puffier. John's eating it with the jam. Mm. This is probably a good time to give you a little bit of the backstory about why we are in Ellensburg, Washington. Ellensburg is in the middle of kind of kind of the south central area of Washington state. And it's a fascinating area from a geologic perspective. But the reason we are here is because of a geology professor who teaches at the Washington at Central Washington University. At the beginning of the COVID lockdown, our friends in New Zealand sent me a link to one of his lectures. And I was just so taken with his teaching style and his uh, he's just, he really draws you in and makes you want more and more and you, you want to learn from this guy. I did not have any geology teachers like this when I was in school. But this guy, Nick Zentner, here in Ellensburg, uh, really made me want to come to this area because during the lockdown, he was live streaming from his backyard. He's really honed in on the Northwest and its geology, which is absolutely fascinating. His last quarter, he was teaching a field geology course and has taken his students to a lot of the places up in this area. One is just maybe a mile across the highway here, and that's where you can find uh, plant fossils. So hopefully tomorrow we will go and find plant fossils and maybe check out some of the other things he's talked about. You know, after he's mentioned uh, a bakery that's nearby called Vinman's, people started ordering up pastries and muffins and food that, he, that they would have delivered to his classroom so that his students could have these wonderful treats. And so, of course, when we came up here, we wanted to visit Vinman's, which we did this morning, and it was, it was fun. That was really fun. And we got a bunch of stuff in there. Not that much, but th look at this. This is a cinnamon swirl bread thing. I can't wait to cut into that. But as we were leaving, the guy came out because we told him we'd come all the way from California to the bakery. He brought us out a couple of, of brownies. Yeah. <laughs> all kinds of goodies, at least 5,000 calories. 
Okay, let's get coffee now. Oh yeah, that's good. There's no butter in that. Okay. Let's see what the insides look like. You can give you little places to cut from. <laughs> Ruffles ever just... Here, I'll cut two of them. <laughs> okay, try that one. And then one of our viewers recommended, there's a um, ice cream place right down the road. We just passed it. Of course, it's breakfast right now. I think maybe we'll try to swing back through to get ice cream. It's called uh, Weingars. Weingars. So um, we'll check that out later. Yes, but if you are coming up in this, this area, you might be interested in this book, Ice Age Floods, and also the roadside geology of Washington. We uh, visited Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park yesterday and it, it that was really interesting to see they have beautiful specimens of petrified uh, of the petrified wood which is really rock they have beautiful agates there and uh, you know I don't know maybe even we'll be able to spend the night there because we didn't get a chance to do that because of John's leg bothering him but uh, we'll have we'll be coming back so that is the backstory about why we're in Ellensburg Sean always makes me laugh. I was making some soup for lunch because it's freezing here. And I said, I wish I knew what you were thinking. <laughs> and what did you say? I said, I'm trying to figure out a way to get a handkerchief in the back pocket of your overalls without you knowing it. So it looked like you're an engineer on a B&O railroad. So See? these are the new overalls that I found. I love overalls. I know that's corny. But they are from a company I would not heard of before, and they're made for women by women. Lots of pockets. They're work clothes, and the company's called Dovetail. Look, pocket for the phone, pocket for your whatevers. I know you guys are saying, well, there's another, what's the other company? Uh, starts with a D. Um, out of Duluth. Minnesota. Duluth. Duluth makes uh, gardening clothes, but I they don't fit me. <laughs> anyway. These are nice and comfy. So which back pockets am I talking about? Those back pockets. That you think it'd go better on the left? You think it'd go better on the right? And we didn't know it was gonna be so cold here. So I bought these yesterday down in La Grande. And we're gonna go on a hike here in a bit. And we have no idea where it goes because there's no cell service. So we can't look. Should have brought a map, but we'll check it out. Soup is ready. Soup is ready. I feel like Hansel and Gretel going into the forest. I've never seen one that color. And here is Sculpture Rock. So what did you just discover? I, I just discovered John snuck me. <laughs> okay, you got me. So this tree produced this root that climbed up here and it goes all the way down here. That's amazing. He wants me to stand there. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Interesting imagining magma coming out through this thing. 
This is another hairpin turn on the road. Uh, actually, this road was used as the main thoroughfare from Spokane to Seattle up until 1927. This is another one of the feeder dikes along the road. We have arrived. Now I'm gonna get out my new hammer and see if I can find any fossils. This thing out. Okay, safety first. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go get him. Kind of a branch, it looks like. We like to get our steps in, no matter where we are. So I quickly Googled hiking around here and found this cute little hike along the river. I think this is the pin, what is it called? Can't remember, I'll have to put it on the screen. How would you rate their ice cream? One to ten. 9.657. <laughs> well, what would be better? What would be a ten? That ice cream you made about ten years ago. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, gosh. It's full of it. That might be the richest ice cream I've ever had. That was really good stuff. We're going to take a quart. Oh, actually, we're going to take two quarts and put them in the freezer in the van. It's a good thing we switched out our refrigerator for a bigger freezer. He's licking the bowl. That's good ice cream. I know it takes me forever to get all my junk together, but we are going to wrap up. I'm going to call it Geology Week here at back at Petrified Forest State Park. 
uh, because you know we had to skip the, some of the uh, the hikes and stuff because of John's leg. But now we're back, and uh, after this, we'll be heading to Spokane. Before you went to the urgent care, when we stopped here, it was windier than heck, and it would have been miserable hiking anyway. So it's nice that we're back here two days later after we've had Vinman's Bakery and Weingar's ice cream, and the weather is gorgeous. We had a great night's sleep at this private RV park right here on the river, and showers and all that good stuff. Dumped the tanks, got them down to zero percent. We're good. By the way, there's a charging station here if you happen to drive up in your all-electric Mercedes Sprinter van. Okay, now let's see. I'm going to take a sip of water. Second time. If you look up on the hill, there is a rock. Let me zoom in. There's this giant boulder just sitting out there by itself. That is an erratic. That was floated here on an iceberg from the glacial floods. For all you snake lovers. Famous ginkgo. Only a couple of specimens have ever been found, and obviously this is one of them. I want to know how they found these. Did they just start digging in different places and find these logs? Because obviously these are below ground level. So how did they do that? They've got like 22, 22 of these boxed exhibits. Have to find out. but the dinosaurs don't belong with the ginkgos. <laughs> Not even close. 